uh, the topic, the title of tonight's talk of people's democracy versus corporate democracy. Because I've, I've had an opportunity to be in Nicaragua and in Cuba and in Venezuela. And I want to say that what is so exciting there is that people are building something new and they are participating in really profound ways. And they're participating in the midst of enormous shortages and, and constant real efforts at coup and, and to undermine them and against US funded organizations all the time. I mean, there's a struggle every single day. Now, corporate democracy, what does that mean? It means here the multi-billionaires and the millionaires and all those who benefit from private ownership, from the way things are in a completely unequal and racist society, they're the deciders. They meet privately. And the elections are a total and complete fraud. An absolute fraud, whether it is Democrat or Republican. So much so that it is probably this year more difficult than any time in the future. Because the issue that has really aroused the passion, the, the feeling across the entire world is Palestine. And that was what was completely and determinately ignored at the RNC and at the DNC. That's not what they want to hear about. If they refer to Hamas, it's always as a terrorist organization. Never. You will never see in the U.S. media that this is the elected government in Gaza. And it is. Except that U.S. does not, not acknowledge elections in any country where there is a grassroots movement and there's actual building going on. That's, that's really the difference. Now, I want to talk about not Venezuela and not Nicaragua or Cuba. Uh, what happened just yesterday with AMLO in Mexico. The U.S. ambassador denounced the proposal to elect justices in Mexico. Said that's undemocratic. I, I was sort of shocked. It's such a shocking statement even. It's undemocratic to elect justices because the justices are appointed as they are here also and and their role is to uphold law and property so not only did the u.s ambassador denounce this proposal that the justices be elected in mexico but so did the u.s chamber of commerce office in mexico they said well this is a threat to u.s investments mm. in Mexico. So it shows this is this is a role, this is a role of justices in Mexico. Now there is another country, Honduras, uh, where the very idea, the very idea that Honduras would meet with any Venezuelan official when the US is trying to get a complete wall against the elections going on, that was unacceptable, and the U.S. denounced it. <laughs> it, it it's so, um, and President uh, Ziamaro Castro uh, said, well then we're gonna put our relations with the U.S. on hold. So mm -hmm. there's big things happening as, as um, the United States tries to enforce, they're not gonna acknowledge elections in Venezuela, or in Cuba, or in Nicaragua, of course, or in Palestine or in 40 sanctioned countries around the world. But they want to tell us that elections here, where you have candidates running who aren't decided by anyone except the super rich. And, and we could even look at the process here where uh, Biden uh, withdrew, but only after all the primaries were passed. And it was simply an appointment of Kamala Harris. Now, the demonstrations in, um, in Chicago, and this was thousands and thousands of people who, who turned out, 
but they face walls and walls and walls of police. Not only uh, Chicago local police, state police, uh, secret service, uh, more equipment than I've ever seen. I think there were almost as many police as there were uh, demonstrators. Every kind of equipment from the helicopters to the gas machines to the, um, you know, and, and on and on. Completely ringing uh, the, the center where the, uh, the demonstration was to be held. And they had fought for months just to be there within three blocks of the convention center. Originally, they were told there would be no one allowed into downtown Chicago anywhere near the convention center. So that's the way democracy happens in the US. It's a completely staged package deal. The demonstration was important for another reason. Um, I'm talking about the March on the DNC 2024, the demonstrations all during that week of the convention. The actions that happened inside, that happened immediately outside, it was a demand that the voice of Palestine, that the genocide taking place be addressed. And the response was that not one, not one Palestinian speaker or even Muslim speaker was allowed on the podium. Four days of nonstop talks, but not even one minute of time on Palestine. So that's another way in which the U.S. corporate democracy completely controls the media and the agenda. 